Do you ever have those times when you're working on a piece of artwork and no matter what you do, you just feel like it's off and you can't necessarily put your finger on it, but you put all kinds of work into it and you still just don't like it? Even if other people are telling you it's beautiful, you just for some reason don't like that piece of artwork? Well, you're not alone. I think we all go through it. And so I'm going to show you a time lapse of a watercolor painting that I just finished. It's this painting here. And I will talk about the struggles I went through with this particular painting and how even though a lot of people seem to like this painting, I just am not in love with it. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play and today I am going to do a watercolor demo and I'm going to be talking a little bit about one of the struggles that a lot of artists have and that is when we dislike our own artwork. So I just want to start off by saying that this isn't, you know, this isn't a video looking for pity or anything like that. I think that this is just a very real feeling that many of us creative types go through and I think a lot of people can relate to it so I figured I would talk about it. So this video might be a little bit different than usual. It's going to be less of a tutorial and more of a very earnest talk about some of the things that us artists go through. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about this piece before I get started on the topic. This is a watercolor piece that I'm doing on hot press arches paper and I am using mainly the M. Graham watercolors along with some Derwent um, watercolor pencils and a little bit of Prismacolors and Polychromos later on. I will link all the materials in the description below like usual in case you're interested in seeing what I'm working with. So this painting started out mainly because I wanted to be able to do a watercolor painting because I don't get to wa work with watercolors very often anymore. And I thought it would be fun because I haven't actually posted a watercolor video on my channel yet and I thought that it would just be kind of fun to, you know, put it out there and talk a little bit about my experience with these watercolors. I have worked with watercolors in the past and I have worked with a lot of ink tents and other water media lately that are similar but this is my first time working with the M. Graham watercolors and so I wanted to try out the paints as well. So that was my main objective when doing this painting and really technically that ended up being great. Like I love the watercolors, I got to have an experience with them and kind of learn how they work so in that way this painting is a success. And I just want to state that I am in no way saying that this is necessarily a bad painting, nor am I saying that I'm not a good artist or any of that. This is more about the feelings that artists get about their own work, even if they already have a certain skill set. So people, no matter what level of art, are not immune to this feeling. You could be a huge expert in your field and have your artwork in museums all over the world and feel insecure sometimes when you're doing a certain piece or just feel like it's not working out. And to me, I think many factors came into play when I was doing this artwork. The first thing was I was so excited about it that I kind of went back on some of my own rules. And those rules would be to not draw directly on your drawing surface. Usually I would get my preliminary sketch worked out first on a separate piece of paper and then transfer it. And this time I didn't. I just went in with my Derwent, my Derwent watercolor pencils and freehanded this piece. And as such, I probably didn't put as much work into it as I normally would have because I was more worried of ruining the paper. And also my excitement got in my own way and so my measurements were off and I didn't check them before I started working on the piece. So this is kind of something that I already know better and this is not, this was out of routine for me as far as my work goes. So I think that already kind of set me off. I really should have taken more time in the preliminary stages. And because of that, throughout the time that I was working, I, str I struggled because things were already off and I was constantly trying to correct those things. I should have gone back. I should have started over when I realized that the drawing was off 
and I really should have given myself the time necessary to work on that. So that really was my own fault, and that was something that people who don't see the reference photo wouldn't necessarily know about, but as the artist, I knew, and it was bothering me the whole time. But another aspect that came into play with me kind of feeling negative about this artwork was not the artwork itself. It was a lot of personal things that I've had going on. I've suffered quite a bit of personal loss lately in the past few months, and I've been very stressed out. And so I think a lot of it was just showing in my artwork. And so I wasn't as enthusiastic when I was painting because I had a general depression kind of going on. And this isn't something I've, I've talked about this before in previous videos, and it's not something I really talk about openly often, but I think it's something that people can relate to. I personally am not somebody who is able to be very creative when I'm depressed. Other artists use their depression as a tool for their creativity, and they they really create some beautiful pieces based off of their feelings, but I'm usually somebody who I like to paint positive and uplifting artworks and it's harder to do that when you're feeling negative and so it makes it that much harder for me to get to the easel and give it everything that I've got. So that being said, how do you get through these feelings? Well me personally, I chalk this up as a learning experience. I know that this painting isn't a bad painting and it actually looks a lot better in person than it does on screen. That was the other thing that was frustrating. As beautiful as the, these watercolors were, some of the colors that I chose are very difficult to photograph or scan accurately. And so it's not portraying, like I'm not able to put the painting out there online and have it look the way it looks in person. And that frustrated me as well because I don't feel like people are getting an accurate view of what this painting actually looks like. But back to what I was saying, I chalked this up to a learning experience. I knew that I had made some some errors in the beginning stages, which I already knew better than to do, but this kind of reiterated it just because I don't want to have to feel that frustration during the rendering process. So I know better to next time to really, even if I'm freehanding, to make sure I take my time with it, recheck my measurements, do it on a separate piece of paper so I can erase if I need to as many times as I want to. I know all these things and I know next time I'm definitely not going to just jump right in, which I, like I said, I already knew better, but this reiterated that for me so that I can avoid some frustration down the line. But I also learned that I really need to be patient with myself because even though I was going through a dark time and I feel like when I look at this piece, I can kind of still see that dark time. I still was able to make something beautiful out of it. I mean, they're flowers. They kind of feel dreamlike to me. And I don't necessarily hate this painting for that. There are times when I look at it and I'm really happy about it. It's just not what I intended. And I think that my perfectionism has gotten in the way. And I just want to put that out there because I know that there's some of you who are still learning and you get frustrated. And then there's some of you who may be very experienced and you're not understanding why you feel frustrated. I think that no matter what level you are at, there are going to be times when the piece is just not going the way you like. I happened to push through. I felt like this was a good opportunity to talk about this topic. And I went through with the painting and I came out with something on the other side because I didn't want my negative my negative thoughts to beat me and I wanted to finish this painting because I felt like that would be my way to just push through it but there were times when I wanted to start all over there were times when I wanted to throw it away and that's okay too if you get to that point and you want to start over that is fine everybody deals with their feelings in different ways and artists well people in general are complex creatures and our feelings that we are having either consciously or subconsciously may show through our work and that's just how it is and you have to just be patient with yourself and get through those times and know that the next piece you have another chance to make something that you really love and like I said I posted this online I got good response there are a lot of people who love it and that makes me happy to know that my artwork even though it may not be something that I'm particularly happy with makes other people happy and again it's not necessarily the technical ability. I was very conscious when it came to how I was layering my paint. For most of this painting, 
as you can see, I started with light layers and I just kept layering because with watercolor, you work from light to dark as opposed to dark to light like you would in oil paint, for instance. So I was very conscious about that. I was very happy with the way the watercolors worked and I learned a lot more about these watercolors and watercolors in general from this piece. So there's a lot of positives coming from this piece and there's a lot of elements that I really love, but I was unhappy when I painted it. And so I think that it makes me, the painting itself now just makes me unhappy to look at. I don't know how to explain it. And in a few months, I may feel different when I look at it. I may feel a lot happier when I look at it, or I might think, wow, that's really not that bad. I think we all go through that as well. We get like these, this tunnel vision, or like we have these goggles on where we can't really see our work for what it is because we're too close to it. And my perfectionism definitely gets the best of me most of the time. And where I didn't start with a good foundation on this one, I think that I just set myself up for a struggle. And that's just the way it is. And I'm sorry if this is such a ramble. It's really just me kind of getting my thoughts out. So as far as the painting goes, I actually really love the subject matter. These are foxgloves. I named it Fairy Hats because somebody actually helped me come up with that name on Facebook when I posted a whip because it looks like a fairy hat. So to me, it kind of has a dreamlike quality. And I really just love these happy little pink flowers. It's an extreme close up of fairly small flowers. And so you can see a little hairs there and stuff. And I didn't go purely watercolor. I allowed myself to use some other mediums to help me get the detail I needed. For instance, I used white Prismacolor a lot to get the little hairs on the flower and I used some polychromos later on to try and deepen the shadows on the flower because I was having a difficult time getting the color that I needed in the inside the flower without it looking too muddy because of I didn't really have the colors I needed even to mix the color that I wanted because I'm still buying watercolors and adding to my collection of these watercolors but for the most part it was kind of relieving to paint because, I mean, watercolor can be so relaxing. It really can be. And I just kind of tried to play with it and just see where it went. And I'm just going in and a, a lot of times I'll lay water down first and then I'll go in with light washes for color. And I'm really enjoying this hot press paper. This is my first time using the Arches paper. Um, I think I want to try and get some cold press next and reserve the hot press for projects with colored pencil and and things like that instead of with watercolor because I almost think I like the look of watercolor better on cold press paper. So I think I'm going to invest in some of the cold press paper. But this paper took a lot of layers. Even being hot press, it took a lot of water. It took a lot of layers. It's a beautiful paper. I mean, it's arches. So like you can't go wrong with it. It's a professional watercolor paper. And I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. I know I've heard a lot of my American friends call it arches, but I've heard it pronounced other ways. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it, so forgive me if it's not the way it should be pronounced. Um, so, yeah, so basically I'm just going through and layering until I like it. I'm somebody who I come from, well, I started with watercolor when I was really, really young. And then I got into acrylic because I like the vibrancy of acrylics. So I have to bring myself out of the mind of acrylics and remember that watercolor lightens as it dries and to keep that in mind when I'm layering and to just really let the watercolor be the watercolor and let it speak for itself because it's one of those mediums that you can't really force. And I did have a really good time playing with it it was so nice working with a transparent medium and just building with layers because it was kind of similar to working with colored pencil in that way. It's, you know, it's very transparent and you just layer until you get to the point where you like it. And I used a Malto pen to, um, to mask out the spots and stuff. And I'll link that in the description below as well. It's masking fluid in a pen so you can get more fine detail with it. I love that thing. And I will put that on and then I'll usually use my electric eraser to remove it once it's dry. And that seems to help a lot. And I also have a rubber cement pickup, which is made specifically to lift the masking fluid. So there's a lot of going back and forth. On the flowers themselves, I am 
making sure to leave streaks because they have little stripes in them and they have little ridges and subtle shadows and highlights and so I am using a sweeping motion with my brush to go in the direction of those ridges and I come in with my watercolor pencils mostly my white watercolor pencil which kind of works a little bit more like gouache it's not as transparent as the other watercolor pencils and I use that quite a bit to straighten up my edges and to add highlights later on you know subtle highlights and to just clean things up a bit so you see me there, I'm using my electric eraser to lift that masking fluid. And that's what that blue stuff is. I like that it's blue because I can see where it is more easily. Makes it easier for me to find later when I need to lift it. So do I, have any of you ever struggled with not liking your artwork? I'm sure that this is something that most of us go through and I don't go through it very often. That's not to say that I'm not OCD about all my work and I'm not always nitpicky about my work I mean to me that's part of the process but it's not usually such a negative feeling involved but when it happens it's just no fun because art is supposed to be relaxing it's supposed to be fun and it's my passion and so I I want to go into it with a sense of purpose and you know a feeling of happiness in what I do and I think that outside influences really got to me this time I'm just straightening up, straightening up that edge. And I use the Prismacolor white a lot, like I said before, to put the little hairs on the flowers. And I actually use them in the beginning. I used some Prismacolor to kind of use a resist. I used, I used them before I even put any watercolor down. And I made the little hairs and then put watercolor over them. And since they're wax, you can lift the watercolor off of them after and they'll still be there. So I used them as a resist, but I also used them over the watercolor after the watercolor was laid down to spruce up some of those hairs as well because it's a fairly opaque pencil it's and i was still able to get fine detail with it even though it's a prisma color because my my polychromos white wouldn't have shown up even though that's a finer detail it didn't show up as well so i had to use the prisma color and it worked great so i'm just going in and putting the shadow in that upper flower and that took a lot of layers. Each, each flower took a lot of layers to get a shadow deep enough. And it's still very pastel in tone. It's still very light. The whole thing is very light all over. But it was a, done from a reference photo that was very, like, comes from a very, very sunny day. So it kind of added to that summery feeling to keep it somewhat light. I'm straightening things up. And you'll see me go back and forth to each one quite often the flower that kind of goes off the page in the upper right that one I think I struggled with that more than any of them and it's funny because it doesn't even have like the full flower in it so I went back and forth on that one a lot throughout all of this so what you're gonna what you're seeing me do there I actually have a what is it called? It's a blending stump. It's one of the paper blending stumps. And I use that for lifting. So I will take a paper blending stump because it has a fine point to it and I will dip it in water and I will lift in places that I want fine detail to be lifted out. And that works really well on the leaves and on some parts of the flowers to make them look sunlit or to make them look transparent. I'll lay some watercolor down and then I'll go in with my blending stump and some water and I'll lift it back out. The stumps do get worn down quickly but they're very cheap and I feel like I use my blending stumps for painting more than I actually use them for drawing. It's kind of funny. I use them a lot for lifting. I do the same thing when I'm working with an oil painting and it's a great tool that way and like I said it doesn't cost a lot of money. A lot of art kits come with them or a lot of pencil sets come with them. And so it's a cheap investment and it's very versatile. I'm a big fan of using different supplies in ways that they're not necessarily intended for because I think that we should take full advantage of the supplies that we have and we should always be experimenting to find easier ways to create the effects that we're after as artists. So it's something I do quite often. I'm just going in and brightening up some of those spots. So I'm sorry if this video is a little bit 
more negative than what I usually put out there. <clears throat> it's just kind of, I, I couldn't very well put this video out there and just act as though it was a tutorial without talking about this subject because it was something that was present throughout me working on this drawing the, or painting throughout the whole working time. Sorry, I'm not being very articulate today. I also have some erasers that I use to try and lift things a little bit. Not that watercolor is really erasable, and some of these watercolors especially, because they're so pigmented, the M. Graham, they're so pigmented, you can't really lift as easily, but there are some places where you can lift very gently, because this paper is just such a good, strong paper that you don't have to worry about tearing it, and you can lift gently with an eraser in certain spots, and I did that in areas on the flowers themselves that have lighter spots, and I obviously did that to make some corrections and to just create highlights, very subtle highlights. So I use a variety of techniques with this. And there are a lot of tools that you probably have in your studio that work great with watercolor. Colored pencil is one of them. Colored pencil works great over watercolor. Marker would work well with it. There are so many things you can do with watercolor. And any, pretty much anything water-based works well with watercolor ink. Um, usually with colored pencil, you want to put it, if you want the color of the colored pencil to remain there and be archival, you're going to want to put that over the watercolor. Otherwise, it acts as a resist, like I said before. So if you paint watercolor over colored pencil, because it's wax-based, the watercolor will lift and it will not stay there. So you want to take advantage of that and you can still use colored pencil that way but you want to use colored pencil in that way with the intent of it being a resist as opposed to trying to cover the colored pencil with it and here is the final piece thank you so much for watching i hope that you have enjoyed this and i hope it's something that you are able to relate to and i will see you next time thank you bye Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of my artwork, I'm on social media, so check out the links in the description below.